Amen. I'm going to jump right into the word today. Uh, you can turn me down a little loud. Amen. But let's just pray. Let's just open up this service this morning and this part of the service with prayer. Lord, we just thank you so much. <laughs> Amen. For this day. This is Resurrection Sunday, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that everything that you said you are, you are. Everything that you said you would do, you did through Jesus Christ, Lord. We have such a promise, such an amazing promise of resurrection through Jesus Christ. Amen. The one who lives forever. Amen. Lord, we thank you that you have given us this promise. Lord, you've given us this gift and we celebrate it today. Thank you for all those that have come today. I pray you would bless every visitor Anoint them, encourage them, Lord, bless their family, bless their time together as they meet today, and as we just, whatever we do, whether it's eating chocolate or ham or whatever we're doing, Lord, we pray that we would just continue to remember that it's because of you and you alone. It's in Christ alone and by faith alone we celebrate today in Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen. amen. In Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1, we read from Colossians chapter 2, I'm going to do a little bit of that today, but I just wanted to share today um, uh, on just something that is so really near and dear to my heart, but we talked a little bit about it last week, and you know, we talk about Resurrection Sunday, that's what today is, Resurrection, but how many know the cross of Jesus Christ is a segue into re Resurrection life, amen, and the cross is the gateway and the pathway to eternal life. How many love the cross? How many thank God for the cross? Amen. Rejoicing today because of the blood of Jesus. And I love this in Colossians chapter 1, which really describes and defines our salvation in Jesus. I want to just share a few moments today about the precious blood of Jesus. Amen. In Colossians 1.13, starting in verse 13, it says, talking about Jesus, who had delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of His dear Son, in whom we have redemption through His blood, even the forgiveness of sins. How many are thankful for that? In chapter 2, verse 13, we read this last week, and this was part of our text last week. And when you were dead in your sins and in the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave all of our sins. Having canceled the charge of our legal indebtedness, which stood against us and condemned us, he, take it, he has taken it away, nailing it to the cross. And having, in verse 15, and having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing, triumphing over them by the cross. Or he is making a public spectacle of his defeat of the kingdom of darkness. Amen. How many believe that we have power over all principalities and powers because of what Jesus did on the cross? Amen. Last week we talked about the handwritings of ordinances that were against you or the sins that were against you that Jesus nailed to the cross. How many are thankful for forgiveness? Amen. But I want you to know today that Jesus forgives us of sins, but he also frees us from the power of darkness. Amen. And he did that through his blood. And God had ordained this from the beginning of time that Jesus would be the perfect sacrifice and that his life would be for our life. How many know that's called atonement? Amen. Aren't you glad that, amen, Jesus is innocent and died for the guilty? Amen. And so the guilty can be made innocent through Jesus Christ and his blood. Amen. How many were guilty, but now you're made innocent through Jesus Christ? Amen. I said, well, Brother Matt, you don't know what I did this week. I kind of messed up and everything. Listen, there's grace and mercy through the blood of Jesus today. Man, aren't you glad for that? Because of what Jesus did. And I want to focus on the blood of Jesus today. And you say, well, this is Resurrection Sunday. But you know, without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. Amen. The blood of Jesus makes it possible for us to experience resurrection life. Amen. And so there's forgiveness and there's freedom in Jesus Christ through his blood. So it's salvation for us and victory over the devil or victory over Satan's kingdom is what the scripture is talking about here. Amen. You know, victory is not just conquering something, but it was also winning something back that was lost. And how many believe that every time Jesus shed his blood, he got a freedom for you? There was a freedom that was gained for us through the blood of Jesus. Amen. And through the suffering of Jesus and the cross of Jesus Christ. Amen. I believe with all my heart that he forgave me of all my sin, the sin that I committed towards him, towards other people, and even towards myself. Hello. 
And that through the cross and the blood of Jesus, that precious blood of Jesus, he set me free, amen, from the law of sin and death. He set me free from death, hell, and the grave, amen. Aren't you glad for that this morning? When John saw Jesus on the Isle of Patmos, he said he had a set of keys in his hands, and it was the keys of death, hell, and the grave, amen. Jesus holds the keys of death, hell, and the grave, amen. Aren't you glad for that? Jesus conquered death and the grave through his blood. And he did that for you and I so that we can conquer death, hell, and the grave. Did you know that sin brings the judgment that is on Lucifer? That's the judgment we came under through sin. That's the judgment of sin. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through what? Jesus Christ our Lord. The sin that judgment brings, the judgment that came on us was the judgment that is still on Lucifer today. Did you know that? But praise be to God, amen, that Jesus sets us free from that judgment of sin and death, amen, through his blood. I believe that there's no other clear picture in the Bible than the Old Testament and the sacrifices that were made and the blood that was spilled of the atoning blood of Jesus Christ. See, God's plan all along is that God would use, amen, the sacrifice that we see in the Old Testament and Jesus would shed his blood to redeem us but also free us from sin's grasp. So today, we're not just celebrating resurrection life, we're celebrating all the freedom that we have in Jesus Christ. Amen. If I'm still loud, you can turn me down. Amen. I might get a little louder. Who knows? I'll try. It's Easter. Amen. But really, we see this in the Old Testament. Let me go back a little bit before I continue. And that is, we see this picture in the Old Testament through what they call the Day of Atonement. How many have ever read about that? There was one day a year where the priest, would only one priest was allowed to go into the Holy of Holies one day and make atone, atonement for the sins of of the entire nation. And how many believe Jesus did that on the cross? Amen. Hallelujah. Well, if you don't know it now, you'll know it hopefully in a few moments. But, you know, we see this picture. As they came out of Exodus, and we see that as a part of coming out of sin and salvation. There's so many pictures there in the Old Testament about what Jesus did for us. There was something that they established, that God established in the, in the wilderness and through the children of Israel, and that was the tabernacle of Moses. How many have ever studied that? So you had the outer court, you had the inner court, or the holy place, and then you had the holy of holies where the Ark of the Covenant was. And in between that room where the Ark of the Covenant was and that other room, there was like this drape or this curtain or this veil, very heavy in fabric, and it separated the two rooms. How many know what that's about, right? And so once a year on the Day of Atonement, amen, the priest would go in, one priest would go in, and he would take a little bundle of, uh, of, of uh, branches and that they had bind together called hyssop, and he would dip that in a bowl of blood that an animal sacrifice, and he would dip that uh, hyssop in there. And then he would go into the Holy of Holies, and the Bible says that he would take that and he would sprinkle seven times on the mercy seat. Seven times on the mercy seat. Then he would, which is the top of the Ark of the Covenant. Then the Bible says he would dip it again and he would sprinkle seven times more in front of the mercy seat, right? And then it said he would step out of that room and he'd go to the outer place on the other side of the veil and then he would sprinkle seven times on the altar of incense, right? Amen? So how many know it was God's plan to cleanse us through the blood of Jesus? Amen? And so we see this picture. There was two areas, three places, and seven times. So there was two areas that he would go. First of all, he would go inside the Holy of Holies, right? And then he would go outside, on the outside of that veil. How many know that speaks of that what Jesus has done for us is both spiritual and physical? Amen? But how many know there was two places that they would sprinkle the blood? On the inside and outside. You know what that means? That shows us that Jesus had to shed his blood on the outside of his body and on the inside of his body for our sins. This is called the atonement. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank God for that. And so Jesus had to do that in seven times. It said he did it seven times. But also it says it's three places that he did it. He did it on the mercy seat. He did it in front of the mercy seat. And did it in the other room on the altar of incense. There's three different places. And how many of that speaks of how the Lord touches us, heals us, and saves us, body, soul, and spirit? How many know the Lord wants to make us whole completely? Amen? He wants to save us completely and utterly, body, soul, and spirit. 
And then there were seven times, the Bible says, seven times. Why is that? Because Jesus needed to shed his blood seven times in order for us to be forgiven and free from sin. Amen? Seven times he had to do that. Let me share that with you today. The first time that we see that Jesus shed his blood was in the garden. Amen. The night before his execution, when the Bible says he sweat great drops of blood, his sweat became like blood. In Luke chapter 22, verse 44, the Bible says Jesus was being in agony. He was in agony and he prayed more earnestly. And his sweat was, as it were, great drops of blood falling to the ground. There was such agony that Jesus was going through because he knew that he was going to face a tremendous amount of pain and suffering through the crucifixion. And the Bible says that he went into the garden of Gethsemane and he even asked his disciples, can't you just pray with me? I'm so heavy. I'm so uh, uh, full of anxiety over this that the Bible says it was so intense that physically his sweat became drops of blood. This is the first time we see Jesus shedding his blood for our sin. Amen. And you know something very interesting that it was in the Garden of Eden, amen, way back, that it was through the temptation of the devil that man went against the will of God and sinned. But how many know there's another garden called the Garden of Gethsemane? where Jesus bent to the will of His Father, and He became redeeming and redemption for all of humanity. So we lost it through the temptation in one garden, but we gained it through the surrendering in another garden. Amen. And so the blood of Jesus here signifies that Jesus won back the power to resist temptation for us. How many thank God for that? Amen. Jesus was tempted in every way that we were, the Bible says, yet without sin. Jesus won the power, amen, to resist temptation for us. Amen. He showed us that we can overcome by completely yielding to God's will in our lives. How many know that Jesus also overcame the power of intense pressure of circumstances? Jesus showed us what it's like to go through in tremendous anxiety, tremendous agony, amen, and surrendering to the will of God, amen, and coming to that place of peace and rest, even in the midst of difficult situations. Come on, somebody, amen. And then we see that there was the crown of thorns that they placed on Jesus' head, and he shed his blood one more time. The Bible says in Matthew 27, 29, and 30 that they twisted together a crown of thorns and they set it on Jesus' head and they spit on him and they took the staff and they took reeds. These are over 300 soldiers, by the way. And they struck him in the head again and again. They beat him up over and over again through this crown. They struck him on the head. And so as those thorns went in, blood poured down. But how many know when they set that crown of thorns on the head of Jesus, it was only recognizing his authority and lordship. Uh Uh-oh. They didn't realize that they were recognizing him as the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Amen. We saw it as a suffering servant, but how many know, amen, Jesus saw, amen, as a, as a, a, a king. Amen. And what I love about this, this crown of thorns and when Jesus shed his blood for us, here's what I love about this, that Jesus won back our honor, our dignity, and our identity as human beings. How many know the devil and sin, through sin, amen, wants to destroy and devalue human life? Wants to destroy our identity. Amen. But when Jesus had that crown of thorns on his head, honor and dignity and identity came back to the human race. Amen. I'm, I'm, come on. How many found out when you got saved, you found value again? You found self-worth again. Amen. Through the blood of Jesus. Amen. And Jesus won back our peace of mind through the crown of thorns. Freed us from torment, amen, from the devil, amen, hallelujah. Aren't you glad for freedom from torment in our mind? Gave us peace of mind, peace that passes all understanding. I believe that Jesus showed us how to overcome evil thoughts, memories that are sinful and selfish thoughts. How many of Jesus showed us we can overcome, amen? Jesus' blood also gives us that pathway to right choices. Amen? That crown of thorn put on his head showed us that we have, amen, now a pathway to right choices. Amen? No longer choosing sin and destruction, but now we can choose life and life more abundant. Amen? Through Jesus Christ. He also showed us that he shed his blood for us through the bruising of his body. Bruising is bleeding under the skin. Internal bleeding. 
How do you know it was inside the veil and outside the veil, inside his body and outside his body that he shed his blood? This was a bruising of the body. In Luke chapter 22, 63 and 64, the Bible says that the men who were guarding Jesus began to mock him and beat him up. And they blindfolded him and demanded, prophesy who hits you next. And they smacked him across the face repeatedly. And he was bruised, the Bible says, for our iniquities. Come on, he was bruised. He was crushed. His skin was bruised. In Isaiah 56, and in, in chapter 50, verse 6, it says, I gave my back to the smiters and my cheeks to them that plucked off the hair. I hid not my face from shame and spitting. That was Jesus Christ. Amen. And the Bible makes it clear that Jesus won back healing for internal pain and suffering. Jesus suffered uh, for us and, and he showed us what it's like, amen, to overcome suffering internally from pain and suffering. How many know there's suffering in broken relationships? There's bruising that comes into your spirit. There's bruising that comes into your heart. There's bruising and brokenness that comes into your life through rejection of people. Through the, the abuse from other people. Through the persecution of other people. There's a bruising that comes into your heart. Come on. There's a bruising that comes into your spirit. Is that right? But how many believe that Jesus showed us and healed us of internal bleeding, internal suffering? Amen. That we don't have to go through that. There's something else I loved about this and the principle that Jesus was wounded and bruised for us. And that is Jesus really saves us from the sins of the heart. How many know sin comes from the heart? Hello? It's sins of the heart. It's that lust and pride and hatred and greed. Amen. The things that people, amen, don't know about. It's that internal sin and struggle that Jesus sets us free from. How many believe that He shed His blood to forgive us and free us from sin? Amen. The fourth thing we see that, that Jesus shed His blood on that day and that weekend is that there was the whipping on His back. Think about it. The Bible says that Matthew 27, 26, Pilate released Barabbas to them and then he had Jesus scourged or beaten and they delivered him to be crucified. We know that through history that obviously you know, we know this, that through the Roman crucifixion, one of the punishments was a whipping and it was 40 stripes. But for some reason they stopped at 39. Amen. The Bible says in Isaiah that by his stripes we are healed, Right? He looked to Calvary. Peter looked back at Calvary and said in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24, who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree by whose stripes we were healed. Amen. I mean, you know, Isaiah looks at Calvary and says, you are healed. Peter looked back at Calvary and says, we were healed. Amen. How many believe that Jesus Christ paid for our healing from sickness and disease on the cross? Amen. His blood cleans us and cleanses us from every sickness and disease. I'm so glad for that. Amen. How many know that by the blood of Jesus, you're pronounced clean in His eyes? You're pronounced healed in His eyes. Amen. So Jesus paid for our healing from sickness and disease, and He won back our health. <laughs> Amen. He took it back from the devil. Amen. See, His body was broken that ours could be made whole. There's something else about this before I move on that I, I've never real, realized. And as I studied over the years, you see this. That when, when in the Old Testament especially, you see that people who were accused and caught in sexual sin were whipped. Think about it. So the, one of the punishments were, yes, it was stoning, but also it was you were scourged, you were beaten. How many believe that Jesus came to set us free from sexual sin? Amen. Every bit of sin, amen, and he didn't miss a beat here. He didn't miss anything. Jesus covered everything in his death, burial, and resurrection, amen, for us. Hallelujah. And so we also see that, amen, as the Bible says, they crucified Jesus. They nailed his feet to the cross. And when they pierced his, or his hands, when they pierced his hands to the cross, amen, how many know there was blood there? Jesus shed his blood through the, through the nailing of his hands on the cross. The Bible says in a prophetic utterance in Psalms hundreds of years before Jesus came, he said uh, in Psalms 22, he said, dogs surround me, a pack of villains encircle me, and they pierced my hands and my feet. This spoke of what the death that Jesus would die. And aren't you glad that Jesus' hands were nailed for you and I? How many know you should have been nailed to the cross? 
Your sins were there. They were against you. But Jesus, the Bible says, took our sins and he nailed them to the cross. And the blood of Jesus was shed for the remission, the removal of our sins that we did through our hands. This means that when Jesus' hands were pierced, he won dominion or took dominion over what you touch. Think about it. The Bible describes us as sin that we, uh, when we, we, when we sin, that we shed innocent blood. Hands that shed innocent blood. Say with me for a moment. Amen. Jesus won back our prosperity and everything that we put our hands to. The Bible says whatsoever they put their hands to, it will prosper. Is that right? How I many you know whatever you touch, these are the things that you actually did. These are the sins that you actually committed. Not just that you thought, not just in your heart, but the sins that you actually committed. The Bible says the blood of Jesus was shed and cleansed those sins. Amen. Come on, somebody. Are you glad for that? Amen. Do I got a room full of people that have been cleansed? Amen. And forgiven and freed? Amen. By the power of the blood of Jesus. Amen. And I love this principle because Jesus actually frees our hands up so we can receive the blessing from the Lord. So we can receive the gift of salvation, the gift of the Holy Ghost. So we can receive the gift of blessing from the Lord. How I many you know before you're saved, you can't handle the blessing of the Lord? You don't even deserve the blessing of the Lord. Amen. But now, when you're saved, that's one of our rights and privileges as believers. Amen. That we receive blessing and prosperity from the Lord. Amen. And I want to just go a little bit further and just say this. When Jesus' hands were nailed, amen, one of the things that he did is he restored the blessing of our work of our hands. Did you know back in the Garden of Eden, the curse that came on us was our work? Now, work wasn't a curse, but we'd be cursed through our work. Is that right? And so how many know when Jesus was nailed on the cross, he said, now you're going to be blessed in your work. Now, whatever you do is going to prosper. Whatever you do in my name, amen, do it to the glory of the Father because now it's blessed, amen. And here's something further. Jesus goes a little bit further and he restores us and he empowers our hands. He said, you will lay hands on the sick and they will recover because my hands have been pierced that your hands can bring healing, amen. I love that about the Lord. We see also that the feet of Jesus were nailed to the cross. We know that when they crucified him, in order for him to be, to be able to held up on that cross, he had to have his feet nailed to the cross. And when his feet were nailed to the cross, there was blood that flowed. Amen. And how many thank God that it was that precious blood that flowed that for, forgave us and freed us from sin. Amen. See, Jesus pierced feet. This is what it means. It means that he won dominion over the places you walk where you've been, and where you're going. How many of you know God blesses where you're going, and he sanctifies where you've been? <laughs> Amen? Hallelujah. And so Jesus does this. I love this because Jesus made a way for me to walk with God. When Jesus' uh, feet were pierced, which signified that we could not walk with God in sin. But how many know when you're born again, now you can walk with God? The Bible says that uh, in, in the beginning, God came down in the cool of the day, and he walked with Adam. And God had a plan all along that he would restore this fellowship with, with us, this intimacy with us, that he can walk with us and talk with us. Aren't you glad that he walks, even though you're going through the valley of the shadow of death, he's still there, amen. He's walking with us. And he also made it possible that I don't have to run to sin every time I feel like it. I'm not bound to run to sin, and I'm not bound to run away from the Lord. God delivered me from going astray from Him. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 53, all we like sheep have what? Gone astray. We went our own way, but the Lord had laid on Him the iniquity of us all that we can walk close to Him and stay with Him. Some of you know what it's like, amen, when trouble comes into your life, you want to run. When the first thing that you do is you just want to run and you want to hide. Come on. When Adam saw the Lord and he had sinned, what's the first thing he did? The Bible says he ran and hid. How many know Jesus saves you from running and hiding anymore? You don't have to run and hide anymore. Grace has been available that we can boldly walk in, amen, to the presence of God and make our petitions known because His feet were nailed and now our walk is anointed. Our walk is sanctified in Jesus Christ. Amen. 
I love this about our walk, is that the victory over the devil was given when Jesus' feet were pierced. Did you know that? Why? Because he turned around and he said, I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and overcome all power of the enemy and nothing will harm you. Amen. How many know you have spiritual authority, amen, to walk all over the devil, amen? He used to walk all over you and take advantage, now you're going to walk all over him, amen? That's what that means. Come on, somebody, amen? Jesus shed his blood, amen, and the same authority that Adam had to take dominion and walk all over the earth and take it has been given to us through Jesus Christ, amen? Amen. Did you realize that, amen, that when his feet were nailed, amen, Power was restored to us. And I love this about the Lord. You know what He does? He doesn't, just, he doesn't just give us the victory, but He gives us, He restores something to us. He gives us something back. And that is this. And that is the Bible says that now when Jesus gave the, the Great Commission, what did He say? Go into all the world and preach the gospel. One of the armors of God is that our feet would be what? Shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. We're now anointed because of what Jesus did at Calvary. Took the nail in His feet. Now wherever we go, we can preach the gospel. Amen. That we can go all over the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now our feet are shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. No longer are we running to evil. We're running to righteousness. Amen. Amen. And lastly... Amen, I love this, and that is this. The Bible says that the final time we see Jesus shedding His blood for us is out of His side. The Bible says in John chapter 19, verse 33 and 35, And when they came to Jesus and found that He was already dead on the cross, one of the soldiers pierced Jesus' side with a spear, bringing a sudden flow of blood and water. And we know that in order to do this physically, this is a physical evidence that Jesus died from a broken heart. That at that time of death, his heart exploded and something happened inside of him. Amen. That when that, that, that uh, the, the spear pierced his side, the Bible says blood and water flowed together. Amen. Aren't you glad that the Bible, one of the things that the Bible says is that if we repent and we are baptized in water, we will be saved. Amen. How many know Jesus didn't come by water only, but by blood and by water? Amen. And we're saved and sanctified by blood and water. The Bible says, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Aren't you glad that there is the flowing of blood and the cleansing of water in Jesus Christ? Amen. But also to signify that Jesus died of a broken heart. Jesus literally died because he loved the world so much. There was so much uh, agony, not just for himself, but for the sins of the world. The Bible says that when he hung on the cross, he was carrying the sins of humanity. And that weight that was on him, the sadness of people's future, the sadness of people's sin, the, the ugliness of sin, and the future of separation from God weighed on him heavenly and broke his heart. He died of a broken heart. The Bible says that he carried our sorrows. He was acquainted with grief like we were. Aren't you glad that Jesus know what it's lo- knows what it's like to have a broken heart? In Isaiah 61 and Luke 4, Jesus declared that He was, came to heal the brokenhearted. <laughs> amen? So when Jesus died on the cross and shed His blood, amen, and blood and water flowed, and we see that He died, it really was to pay the price to heal the brokenhearted and win back our joy. I mean, you know, the Bible says that He would give us a spirit, a, 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 a coat of worship for the spirit of heaviness. He would give us the oil of joy for our sorrow. Amen? And a garment of praise for the what? Spirit of heaviness. Amen? That heaviness of your sin, the oppression of that sin has been lifted and now the joy of the Lord is our strength. Now the joy of Jesus is ours. Amen? Amen. The Bible says that Jesus endured the cross for the joy that was set before him. Amen. And Jesus died of that broken heart to heal you of a broken heart that you can know what it is to have joy in your life. Amen. To know what it is to, amen, to have emotional healing and health in your life. Jesus wants to heal us of a broken heart. Amen. Aren't you glad for that? And here's what Jesus restored. He gave us the capacity to love God with all our heart and love other people better than ourselves. 
That's what he gave us. He gave us the joy of our salvation. He gave us the joy of the, his presence. He redeemed, amen, the joy that we didn't know. Come on, some of you remember what those lonely nights were like. You remember being in a crowd of people and yet feeling lonely. Amen. You remember what it was like, amen, when your sin left you high and dry and broke and disgusted. Amen. And the feeling of sin, the, the ugliness of sin was there. But aren't you glad that Jesus heals the brokenhearted? And He gives joy to those who repent. And there is great joy in the presence of the Lord. That's what the Bible says. I don't know about you, but heaven's going to be all joy. Amen. There's no more suffering. There's no more tears. Amen. There's no more heaviness. There's nothing but joy in the presence of the Lord. But aren't you glad that you can know that joy today? Jesus comes to heal your heart, to heal our broken hearts, to give us emotional health and, and wellness. Amen. As we speak of and give us that love for God and for other people. I'm so thankful today for the precious blood of Jesus. The cross is the gateway and the pathway to eternal life. And the cross and the blood of Jesus was that segue to receive resurrection life. Amen. Aren't you glad for the shed blood of Jesus today? That Jesus, amen, gave us, amen, what was required for sin. And he sets us free from the power of darkness. Amen. You don't have to be tormented in your mind. You can have peace of mind. You don't have to go around with a broken heart. You can have joy. Amen. You don't have to have loneliness. You can have comfort in your, even in your pain and suffering. He gives you joy. Amen. He gives you comfort because he died for us. He shed his blood. He was worthy and he gives us what a great exchange. Come on. He gives us. Amen. Freedom and forgiveness. Amen. So thankful for that. This morning, can we just stand on our feet? And I just want to close with this thought. Amen. You know, as we read in the Old Testament, Jesus had to shed his blood seven times. Seven times in seven different areas, his body he shed. Why? Why? Why did he have to do that? He said, well, because we could say that the way that Jesus suffered and, and, is, and the way that he died was a picture of how, how gross sin is, how bad sin is, how desperate it is. It represents the state of sin. Yeah, we could say that. But why did Jesus have to do it seven times? Why do we see this clearly and it represents the Old Testament? It's because really what it is is that it, it had to be a complete, perfect, full work of salvation. How I many know this number seven means completion? Number seven is that work of perfection and completion. Amen. How I many know Jesus created the world on, in seven days? Completion. He said, it is finished. It's done. I'm done creating. Amen. And how many know when Jesus was on the cross, what did he say? It is finished. Not just that my work is done. Not just that I ran my race and now my purpose is over. It wasn't any of that. It was Everything that was required for forgiveness and freedom is complete. It is full. It's done. In other words, he didn't miss a single requirement. He didn't miss a single sin. He didn't miss a single, uh, you know, uh, 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 curse of the law. Nothing was left out. Jesus did it fully and completely. And so you know what that tells me? That tells me that I'm not half born again. I don't get a little bit of his joy. I don't just have partial salvation. I get all of it. It's complete. It's perfect. And it's, it's done. It's finished. It's in Christ. Amen. How many believe Jesus suffered? Amen. And he bled seven times so that it can be complete. It could be perfect. It could be full. It could be done. Amen. And how many can say, I'm saved, beyond a shadow of a doubt, I'm saved. I'm not half saved. I'm not half in, half out. I'm not, I mean, I'm fully saved. I've been born again. Amen. And this work at Calvary has set me free, not just a little bit, fully. When Paul wrote to the Caution Church, he said this. He said, you should rejoice because you have been healed. Because you have been delivered. Because you have been set free by what Jesus did. At Calvary. How many believe that? Amen. And how many can lift your hand to heaven and say it is finished? It is finished. Amen. There is not just the cross, not just the grave. Now there's an empty tomb because it's finished. It is complete work of Calvary, what Jesus did. 
And so this morning, I just want to encourage you that if you're not born again, and you're not saved, and you're even in sin, and you're away from the Lord, amen, you need to come back to the Lord. Come into the salvation that Jesus has given. Your sins are forgiven. Your heart is healed. Your body is healed through Jesus Christ. Your emotions are made well. Inside and outside, body, soul, and spirit, Jesus has made a way for us to be forgiven and set free by the power of His blood. Amen? Amen? Can we raise our hands today and pray? Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord, for your blood. Thank you, Lord, for the cross. And even though today is Resurrection Sunday, it's all part of the plan. It's all part of the work of Calvary. It's all part of what God intended for us to be saved. And I thank you, Lord, that we can be saved completely through and through, through Jesus Christ, Lord. I thank you, Lord, today that, Lord, if we repent of our sins, we can be set free by the power of God. We can be saved and baptized in water as we obey you, Lord, and we can receive the Holy Spirit. On the day of Pentecost, they said, what do we have to do to be saved? Peter stood up and said, repent and be baptized for the remission of sin. Amen. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. We thank you for the death, the burial, the resurrection, the ascension, Pentecost, and the expectation of you coming back. Hallelujah. Part of your great plan of salvation. We give you all the praise and all the glory today in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, amen. Amen. Can we put our hands together and give God a cheer? Thank God. What's up, fam? This is Michael. Thank you for joining us. If you love what you saw, Don't forget to hit that like button, the subscribe button, then the bell notification with all the notifications on so that you can be informed on every time we post new content. If the Lord's placed it on your heart to give, you'll find that link down in the description below. Don't forget to follow us on all of our other social media platforms so that you can be up to date on everything we're doing here at River Valley Church. Most of all, if you need someone to stand with you in prayer, Click the link to our website. You'll find contact information. We want to get you in contact with prayer warriors who are going to stand with you in your time of need. Thank you for joining us today. We love you. We appreciate you. And we'll see you next time. God bless.